Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Ryko Filters, Evans Waterless Coolants and Pace Farm. Hello and welcome to this celebrity segment of Classic Restos. I have travelled to an undisclosed location here in New South Wales to not only find out more about the person, but what type of classic cars this person may like. And you will see more after this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machinerihouse.com.au. Now, today's celebrity guest is well known. He's known for a colourful role in his career, hosting a TV show for children and then a program on how to improve your home and in recent years playing a very successful role as a psychopath killer. But today we meet the real guy, the Aussie guy behind the scenes, away from his work, up close and personal. Meet John Jarrett, but on a different level to what you may be used to. Born 5th of August 1952, John grew up in Wongawilly, a small rural town near Wollongong in New South Wales, and later in the Snowy Mountains area. Leaving NIDA in 1973, John has worked his way through and has made a successful career from Australian television and film acting and also a producer and a director as well. Of course, John is best known for portraying the main antagonist, Mick Taylor, in the Wolf Creek film series. It's a far cry from the Better Homes and Gardens TV hosting role and a plethora of other acting roles. Things aside, John is a kind-hearted type of guy with a fairly laid-back nature. And when it comes to classic cars, he has a passion for many. But the ones that mean the most are the classic Holdens. Well, I'm, I'm a Holden man. Always have been, always will be. Um, my old man is a Holden man, so I come from a Holden family. And uh, I've had every Holden except the EH. Can you believe that? Uh, every Holden that I consider Holdens, that's up to the HR. They, as far as that, that was it for me. I never had an FX, but I had an FJ Ute and an FJ panel van. I didn't have an FE, but it had an FC panel van uh, called the Wasp. I had that when I was in Townsville. We used to trawl the street in Flinders Street. And I had a good window man, you know, and I had the panel van. I've had uh, an FB sedan and an EK sedan that got stolen and I got it back. Um, I've had an EJ panel van and an EJ station wagon. Never had an EH. And I had an HD sedan and an HR station wagon. So I've had a few. And I had a QE, a QE, an HQ work truck. And I had a statesman, an H. HX Statesman. The cars I drove in the Wolf Creek series, the, fr the franchise, uh, is basically F100s and uh, and the Statesman, the famous Statesman. And I've got to say, Holden man again, I really enjoyed dri driving the Statesman. And um, I did all my own stunts bar one, which is deemed too dangerous. But um, so I hooked along in that Statesman we got up to about 140, 150k, flying along that those outback roads and screaming up beside that girl and freaking her out. And I had the time of my life. And um, the scary thing was, the, the vehicle uh, people in charge of the vehicles are supposed to um, have them in tip-top shape, right? And I was scooting along doing 160k. Uh, in that thing um, and a fortnight after we wrapped 
someone drove it around the corner and the front wheel just did that, caved in. If that had happened to me, um, I don't think I'd be here now. In the second uh, movie, Wolf Creek 2, for all the world I look like I'm driving a semi-trailer. But it is a, a, a Kenworth cabin. It's put up onto a, um, a car trailer and towed around and it looks for all the world like I'm driving that um, semi. But the wide shots and every other thing and, and, the, and uh, uh, is my wonderful stand-in Lance who looked a lot like me. Um, because modern day filmmaking and insurance uh, stuff, I'm not allowed to drive anything that could scare me. So I wouldn't be able to do the Mad Max stuff anymore. Um, which is a bit of a shame because in the old days you did all, I did all my own driving because I learned how to drive when I was, as soon as my feet touched the floor from central, I'm from central Queensland, right? And the old man taught me to drive in an EJ Holden um, station wagon, nipple pink it was. And the reason he got that, because it's really cheap, because no one wanted the car that colour. And he taught me to drive on in Aramac, um, on, on the old race course and I had to go in reverse and when I could do 80k in reverse I was allowed to do to go forward because any idiot can drive forward so I can reverse park a trailer a parallel park one <laughs> I'm really good at going backwards <laughs>and Ryko Filters has changed with it. But one thing stayed the same. Ryko's commitment to develop and test all our filters under Australian conditions. Today, we're proudly celebrating our 80-year commitment to a design philosophy that ensures all oil, air and fuel filters meet or exceed vehicle manufacturer's specifications, delivering genuine quality and performance you can trust. Ryko Filters, the professional's choice. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Evans Waterless Engine Coolant. Simple to install and stays good for the life of the engine. Suitable for all engine types, Evans contains no water, eliminating corrosion, vapour pressure and overheating. With a boiling point of 190 degrees Celsius, there's no application or environment too extreme. EvansCoolants.com.au Water for drinking, Evans for cooling. Pleasure having this guy on the show. How are you, John? Not too bad, Fletch. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Good. Thanks for uh, you coming out. Right for an old bloke. Thank you very much. Yeah. And your dapper, I like your hat as well. Yeah, and matching jacket. Yeah. You know, I try. Yeah, on the on the amazing Fletch show. Yeah. You're you're with it, aren't you, mate? Oh yeah. <laughs> on the out and the went, actually. <laughs> uh, what a privilege to have this guy. I mean, seriously, uh, you've got cars in your blood. You love your old Holdens. Yeah. It's an incredible story. Uh, we're standing next to this nineteen. 56 Holden here. Yeah. Tell us about what's going on with this. Well, this is an FJ panel van and um, my dad had it and he built it back in the uh, 80s, early 80s. And then um, he got too old, his shoulders were stuffed and he couldn't drive it because it was a power steering. So he said that I could have it and he virtually give it to me. And uh, I drove it around from 85 to about 2007 and uh, then I sold it to my other mate 
Jason, we're, we're here at Jason's joint now, um, and he's torn it right back and built it from the ground up again. Yeah. And it's going to be the best FJ panel van in the world by the time he finishes with it. Because That's a big call. Well, he, he is meticulous and this thing is as solid as a brick and yeah. it's going to be the best panel van in Australia when he's finished with it. Okay, uh, moving on through. As we do here today with John Jarrett at Jason's Place, walked outside, a bit of a custom EK ute. Now, the EK means a lot to you, doesn't it, John? Yeah, well, the EK and the FB are b basically the same shape. But the sedan has got the splash, the two-tone splash. But I had an FB, actually, and it was a beautiful car. And I, I was driving up to Mwillambar with a mate of mine, Steve Bisley, who you might remember as the goose in Mad Max. And well, I loved him in the big steel. In the, yeah, he, oh, he, I love him in so much. Water rats, he, he's been in everything. And he's a good mate of mine. And we're driving up, and we on the Pacific Highway, we come around the corner and we hit a cow in the middle of the road with the old FB and um, we smashed the mud guard and uh, the grill and Bizzo said, oh mate, because he was driving, I'm oh, sorry mate, I said, don't be sorry, just get the car off the road because we passed a semi coming up the hill. Yep. So we went, got off the road, clunk, 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 and the semi came around and went straight over the cow and it was pretty shock and then... Um, was a bit of a bugger, but um, we went to the Mwillambar, um spare parts joint, the the the, the um, wrecking yard, and in those days you could fix things. You know, this is early 80s, mm. and we bought a mud guard and a grill, yeah. and we unbolted ours and bolted that one on, yeah. and off we went. I try doing that now. Can't do that now. We move on through uh, an FC. Nice ute, this one. Been restored. Beautiful red interior. What can, what can you tell us about your memories on an FC Holden? Well, the FC Holden was the very first Holden I ever had back in 1970. Uh, and it was uh, green, so we called it the Wasp. and had reverse chromies, but they were black. I couldn't afford the chrome. Uh, and it was um, a panel van, of course. And there was certain reasons why an 18-year-old bloke would want a panel van, mm. you know, because they're spacious. You know? <laughs> Take rubbish to the tip for the yeah. pe for the parents. You calling my girlfriend rubbish? No, 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 oh. no, no. I don't want to cross you in any way, John. Anyway, my mum, God rest the soul, she's gone to God, but she made a mattress for me that fitted around the wheel wells. Oh, That's the kind of mum you want. Cut out sections around your mattress, wow. Yeah, yeah, well, my mum was a realist. Mm. She didn't pretend that nothing was happening, yeah, you know. Yeah. Good for her, right? Eh? Yeah, Jeez. absolutely. Nothing like that, a panel van with a cut-out mattress with double overhead underhang. That's it, yeah. and twi twin overhead dipsticks and a straight-through <laughs> glove box. Straight-through glove box? Yeah, it went wow. straight through, yeah, straight yeah. through to the engine. Yeah, it was your heater in winter, right? That's it. Yeah. John, I have to ask you, Wolf Creek 1 and 2, such an incredible success. Where to now? Well, Fletch, as you know, Series 1, uh, the six-part series on stand, did extremely well, so they're doing a Series 2, and I'm um, looking forward to that. And we've got a Holden in that. It's uh, an H, HJ or an HX, I'm not sure, but it's all rusted up and looks amazing, and... Uh, and we're going to use that in the film. So the Holden is coming back to Wolf Creek. And then after we do that series, hopefully we'll do a third series and then uh, the Wolf Creek 3 movie. Just quickly about the HX, we're uh, not going to bang that up in the movie? As your viewers are probably seeing it at the moment, it's pretty banged up already. There's not much I can do to add to that. <laughs> I think Mick's capable of anything. And speaking of which, John, when you... I've got to ask this stuff. When you play the role of Mick Taylor, you've got to get into character. Has the actual character ever scared you? It scares me when I watch back what we call the rushes, which is the, the dailies of, of what we've shot, and I go, my God, I did that. But in the moment, no, no, because I'm playing Mick. And Mick has a lot of fun and he enjoys himself. So I'm, I'm never stressed out or, or, or feeling freaked yeah. when I'm doing it. I have to ask you, you've got to do that laugh for me. <laughs> you've got no idea how surreal it is being here with this guy. John, it's been absolutely amazing uh, catching up with you. Uh, an absolute honour to meet you. To think that you go back with your early Holdens, it's a perfect fit with classic restos. I know that you're passionate 
And, uh, mate, well done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fletch. It's been a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid-up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Evans Waterless Engine Coolant. Simple to install and stays good for the life of the engine. Suitable for all engine types, Evans contains no water, eliminating corrosion, vapour pressure and overheating. With a boiling point of 190 degrees Celsius, there's no application or environment too extreme. EvansCoolants.com.au Water for drinking, Evans for cooling. Australia's changed over the last 80 years, and RICO Filters has changed with it. But one thing stayed the same, RICO's commitment to develop and test all our filters under Australian conditions. Today, we're proudly celebrating our 80-year commitment to a design philosophy that ensures all oil, air and fuel filters meet or exceed vehicle manufacturer's specifications, delivering genuine quality and performance you can trust. RICO Filters, the professional's choice. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. And with a range like this, you cannot go wrong. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sand blasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House and they're also open Saturday mornings. Their range of machine tools are workshop tested. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. With me now, I've got a great bloke. His name's Jason from Rusty Resto's Car and Bike Club. How are you doing, Jason? Very well, Fletch. Yourself? Good, mate. Good. Now, first of all, thank you uh, for inviting John here today and obviously myself. Now, this is the guy that's... Uh, doing the restos on these cars. We've got John Jarrett's panel van here, and we, we heard the history of that later. You've got a big job ahead of you with this car, Jason. I've got a very big job ahead of Unfortunately, it's been left uh, unattended for too many years out in the weather. Bloody John, eh? Yes, definitely John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, it meant a lot to him and being his father's as well. Um, rusty sections in the floor. Mate, she's a go to woe. Everything's got to be done to this. But I tell you what, we look down the side profile, she's as straight as a die. It's going to look nice when it's done. It's got great lines, they always do. I've always had uh, a passion for the FJ panel van. And uh, yep, it's, a, it's a, a definitely a labour of love. So, Jason, how did you meet up with John Jarrett? Um, I knew John about 27, 28 years ago. We both drove FJ Holdens and uh, we bumped into each other in a car park one day and just became mates from then on. Right. Yeah. It's just a small world that, uh, well, you've ended up with one of his first vehicles. I ended up with a vehicle after a long time of trying to obtain it from him. It uh, survived a lot of things in the past and uh, John was happy to sell it to me eventually because he knew I'd actually restore it back to its glory and he could come and borrow it. So how, uh, how long do you go back with Holdens, Jason? Where do they go back with you? Uh, Holdens go back to me from when I first learnt to drive. I drove an FB Holden, mm. and uh, that's what I learnt to drive in, and, uh, and an FJ Ute, which I still have. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they were, well, Australia's own car. I mean, they're just iconic in so many ways, the old Holden, aren't they? They're iconic, and I think a lot of us grew up with uh, probably no money, and they were cheap. So that's what everyone had them. Yeah. And uh, I think when you grow up with something, it's in your blood, it sticks with you. Okay, so um, build time on this old girl here. I mean, look, we see the two cars out the front that you've done as well. If that's any example in terms of the time it takes to do a restoration, the finished products out there, uh, just on that note, uh, the green ute there, the white FC, both with a, some custom mods, both of those. Both custom mods, both are modern, I suppose, under the bonnet. Just old on the outside, made them more drivable, um, something you can actually enjoy on a long trip with reliability, complete with the aircon for the hot days. But uh, I'm a big believer in it, you've got to enjoy your car you drive, so you, you build it to how you want to drive it. 
I love what you've done to the white FC ute in terms of keeping it standard on the outside and running a V8 in that. I'd say that the old girl would take off from the traffic lights a little quicker than what the average person would expect to see. It's a pleasure to drive and it is. It's a bit of a, a bit of a sleeper, I suppose, what they call it. But I do like the look of the old car, but I like the torque of an old V8. There's oh, nothing yeah. better. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, there's, yeah, once you've got a, once you've had a nice eight, there's no going back. Okay. Now, Jason, about your car club and your bike club, give us a quick rundown on uh, how that works. We're just a, a small club, uh, just a local based. Um, we've got a big selection of cars from, uh, you know, the turn of the century up to some modern stuff as well. A lot of bikes. Um, we're just, uh, we just we we do it for charity purposes only, uh, but everyone that's in it's in it for a passion, you know, with their cars. So, you know, we enjoy it. We only have small get-togethers. But, um, you know, as I said, we're all the same people and the same passion. Looking around the shed here, I, I see a couple of engines. I like to talk about those. Now, the one sitting right there, a 202? A 202 out of a – it's an old JP block out of an XU1 Tirana. And I'm um, just doing a, a freshen up on it. You've got some 60 oversized pistons going on there? It's, it's nearly at its last rebore, absolutely. But it's probably done a couple of million kilometres. Yeah. But um, I'm bringing it back to life. It'll probably last me a lifetime this time. Good on you, mate. And the one sitting over there with the turbo, what's the story there? Uh, the turbo, the Garrett Strata system came out actually on standard rally pack Commodores back in 79. And so I have got one of the original engines I'm uh, restoring. And I'm not too sure what it's going to go in yet, but I, w I will use that in another resto. And Jason, the white FJ Ute here, sitting to one side, looks like nobody wants it, but I know you do. And the panel fitment, it's as straight as a die. Yes, it's a good old uh, Ute, originally an old country car from Bathurst. I uh, had the pleasure of driving it for 21 years before I took it off the road to restore it, and it's back in the list with all the others at the moment, but it will come back to its former glory. You took it off the road 21 years ago to restore it? No, uh, I drove it for 21 years. <laughs> Right. It's actually been off the road for about eight. Right. Eight years. <laughs> eight years, yeah. Oh, don't worry, it, it'll happen. It'll happen. It will happen. Um, you've got a little bit on your plate, haven't you, Jason? I have a lot on my plate. I'm, uh, I'm a, I can't say no to a resto, so I take on too much, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. But I'm, hopefully I'm going to live long enough to restore them all. Well, with the projects uh, up in the house earlier, um, we're having a coffee and a, and a biscuit and listening to the things that uh, and the projects that Jason was rattling off, I got up to around about, mm, about 138 years of age that you're going to have to live for, I'd say. I think you're right, Fletch, but I reckon if I don't sleep as much, I might get some of them done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Look, on that note, thanks again for uh, having myself and John Jarrett here uh, at your residence here today. Uh, John's first car, the two restos out there, the FJ potentially uh, for down the track, mate. Again, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a pleasure and, uh, and, and it's been great having you here. Thanks, yeah. Fletch. Good on you. Thanks, Jason. Good on you, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Classic Restos featuring special guest celebrity John Jarrett. Now, John left about half an hour ago, which is fairly safe to say that it's okay for me to walk through those bushes there to get back to my car. It's also a special thanks to Jason Paul for allowing us to come here to his residence to film today's show. As I say at the end of every Classic Restos episode, until next week, no matter where you're watching from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. <laughs> you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Ryko Filters, Evans Waterless Coolants, and Pace Farm.